Good day and welcome to the Noah Scrolls and Noah TV. This is the Fick Up Scrolls. Um, I'm Dr. Mobani coming to you again here from our beautiful new world. And today we're going to continue the part two of our recurrent urinary tract infection series where I'll be discussing the management of recurrent urinary tract infection. Now I'm going to recap uh, in a short 30 seconds what we discussed in the first video about urinary tract infection. Urinary tract infection is the entrance of a bug into the lower urinary system where it's not welcome. And when the, en when the bug enters and grows and reaches and multiplies and reaches a peculiar number and causes a reactionally inflammatory response from the body because they've invaded the cells of that organ, then an infection exists. Um, it's in the female because of close proximity of our urinary orifice, the urethral orifice, we usually refer to as a number one hole, to the anal orifice, a number two hole. Urinary tract infection or inoculation into the urinary tract almost always occurs. Hence, the post pubertal female is actually allowed to have three UTIs in a year without anybody baiting an eyelid to it. But nobody really wants to have one because one is quite painful and once an infection is established, it has to be eliminated by the use of oral antibiotics. When a patient has more than two episodes of urinary tract infection in six months or three episodes in a calendar year in 12 months, we now regard it as a urinary, as a recurrent urinary tract infection. And then we need to ask ourselves a question, what is happening? Why is the body not able to protect itself from invasion from these organisms and also get rid of them even when they have entered? And why is the index patient uh, has the, have the propensity to have these infections coming uh, back to back, so to speak. Now, and I must say that one urinary tract infection begets another, and why do I say so? For a bug to actually cause a reactionary inflammatory response from the body because of its presence in the body, it has to actually produce an enzyme called a lyase enzyme that melts or rather breaks down the, the bladder mucosa so that the bug can gain access into the interstitial fluid that is rich in nutrients that is surrounding the cells of the bladder. This just accords more food for the bug as they've reached that peculiar level where the secretory or the, the um, product of metabolism in the urine is not enough for it. And when that happens, then the body recognizes that they've been invaded and sends its own policemen to try and take care of it in the, in the form of leukocytes. Um, and also, because leukocytes come in there and the body produces cytokines, the index patient feels a lot of bladder spasms and pain, which presents with the dysuria, the frequency of urination, as well as the urgency, because the bladder is always spasming. So that is, in a nutshell, a urinary tract infection. Now, when we give you antibiotics and that bug is killed, the bladder wall remains quote-unquote decimated and essentially is a sitting duck and it usually takes a normal bladder wall about four months to shed its cells and rebuild an intact lining. In that four months, the index patient is actually a sitting duck and the and the ability of an, a new incoming bug to cause infection is so much more easier because quote unquote, the, it's an open door uh, access to the new bug. They don't even have to produce a lyase enzyme to dissolve the world anymore to cause an infection. So essentially one UTI begets another and, and once that happens, we need to break the cycle somewhere to stop the recurrent nature of it. And the best way to stop it is prevention because once an infection is established, it must be treated if the patient is symptomatic. And in some cases, even when they are asymptomatic and they fit the criteria for treating asymptomatic bacteria in the urine. So how do we prevent a UTI from happening and hence from becoming or taking on a recurrent nature? Let's look at the female peri perineum with the way God created it. There are three holes that navigate through the pelvic floor in the female. 
the first one we got to was number one which is the urethral opening which is the opening into the bladder that opening is actually embedded into the anterior vaginal wall so it's part and parcel of the vaginal wall the third opening is the anal verge 99.7 percent of all bugs that cause urinary tract infection actually come from the anus that means as we release the feces in the process of defecation, we release millions of bugs with them. Some of them get embedded on our skin and this has have nothing to do with brown stool. You can clean yourself all you would, but the microscopic bugs are there. Just hypothetically, they start to move around because they've just been shed from their home, so they are looking for a new home. The first place they meet is the vagina. But like I said in my earlier video, the vagina has its own resident evil. It's created to have its own microbe, microbes that live inside of it, that protect it and that maintain its pH. So essentially it's a no room at the end policy when the bug gets there. Then the bug now reaches the urethral orifice, which is like a private showing, totally sterile. Then it ascends the 3.5 centimeters short distance to get to the bladder and additionally there is urine in it and the urine has a lot of metabolites. And then they can stay, grow and multiply and that multiplication is by what is called a binary fusion. The bug essentially splits in half and the binary time could be as little as milliseconds depending on how bad the bug is, which means how virulent, how disease cousin the bug is. So essentially the entrance of a bug from that point to the point where it reaches a critical mass of about a million of them to actually invade the bladder wall could take anywhere from a couple hours to one day depending on how fast the bug is replicating. So now we understand how the infection process occurs, we can nab it at all these points to stop the recurrent nature of it. Let's talk from the point of, of release in the, in the uh, rectum. We have a proprietary product here at Nouveau World that we advise all women especially those who are suffering with this condition to use as their daily bowel movement routine to actually kill bugs at the source because like i said it's not a matter of being clean it's a matter of sterilizing that area each time you poop so when we would, when we come in to discuss this when you're here we will discuss how you're going to change your bowel movement routine such that you essentially kill the bugs at the source if you do this close to 100% each time when you have a bowel movement, you will not have another infection. Then we get to the vagina. The vagina, like I said, has its own resident bugs, but your urethra is part and parcel of the anterior vaginal wall. And in the postmenopausal woman, the vagina begins to thin down with age. And when that happens, the urethra is left without a proper cushion. So if you can rebuild that vagina and get back youth into the vagina, that will be a protective mechanism because the urethra will be tightly closed and will not be easily accessible to the bug. So we will discuss about the reintroduction of estrogen to the vagina and or other means that will be useful in revitalizing the vagina in the postmenopausal female. And then we come lastly to the urethra and the bladder. Remember it's a game of numbers. If the bug has already entered the urine, then if you eliminate that urine regularly because you drink enough and you're well hydrated, then essentially the bugs will never reach that critical number to cause an infection and they will die a natural death. And in addition, we will also be giving you what I call the policeman of the, of the bladder, which is an antiseptic that will be secreted or metabolized through your kidneys that will float in the urine 24 seven and protect your walls from reinvasion as it's trying to shed and replenish itself. So these are the ways we can prevent a UTI from occurring and stop that self feeding process and loop of the recurrent nature because once an infection is established, it gets to be treated. So thank you for listening and I'll see you on my next scroll. Bye bye.